Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mama Genius Hub podcast. And we have another wonderful guest in store for you. She's going to be telling us all about going right. Gr- we're going right into guiding kids genius because she's going to tell us about how to bring history into your kid's life, as well as how to bring leadership out of them. It's going to be one of those for you if you want to get deep dive into how to really bring that genius out of your kids. So let's go ahead and get started today. Welcome to Mama Genius Hub podcast, where we support moms with big dreams from entrepreneurship to personal aspirations. I'm your host, Michelle DeKaiser, and I'm here to help you unlock your potential in all areas of life. Join us as we explore strategies for thriving in motherhood while pursuing the dreams, the key to actually unlocking your genius. Subscribe now and embark on a journey to realize your fullest potential. Hello. So we have Barbara, who is an author, educator, and parent who provides tools to inspire, entertain, and educate youth. History is a key to solving today's problems. Tired of being bombarded by social media noise. I'm sure we've all had that, especially in the last couple of weeks and so. Accept the challenge. Be a truth teller. Barbara allows us to be a historian and a retired educator. Her education spans more than 40 years serving as a teacher, special educator, principal, and school administrator. Using the whimsical Little Miss History character to narrate her book series, she makes learning history a fun-filled adventure. Barbara firmly believes if you don't know your history, you don't know what you're talking about. Welcome to the Mama Genius Hub podcast, Barbara. We're so excited to have you and really dive into that kid genius today. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm really happy to be here and have the opportunity to share with your listeners some of my thoughts. Well, we're excited. So we're just going to dive right in like I always do. What is your why behind wanting to, to, to educate kids in this manner? Well, my why is helping kids to be entertained, to be inspired, and to be educated in history because I firmly believe if you don't know your history, you don't know what you're talking about. Our world is filled with stories. From the beginning of time, we use stories to pass down knowledge from one generation to another. And where does history begin? It begins in the family. So what is the first thing children do? They want to know the stories. Who am I? How did I get here? Who are the people in my family? Why do they dress the way they do? Why do they eat the things they eat? Why do they attend certain events? Why do they follow certain religions? All about that why, and and that's how it begins. And as children grow, grow older, they enter different communities. So they go to school, and then they have a new peer group, and they meet some people who are the same, some people who are different. And they learn that differences are not necessarily a bad thing that we all have our stories and all of us are knitted together. We grow older, we become members of a community. We are drawn to a community that may have similar cultural values, but then again, we may be in a community that is very diverse and has many, many different kinds of values. Mm -hmm. And the more we learn about history and the past, the more we have an opportunity to apply that knowledge to the world we're living in today and to hopefully use that knowledge to create some kind of framework for doing things better in the future. So I have on my blog uh, a little post of uh, 14 reasons to study history, but actually there are hundreds of reasons to study history. and. Uh, I've already mentioned a few of them, uh, but um, it also helps us to understand ourselves because by learning uh, about others, we see people who are the same, we see people who are different. We learn that some people made a lot of mistakes and hopefully we can use that knowledge to avoid making the same mistakes we learn about the good, the bad, and we hopefully use that to develop our own morals, our Mm -hmm. own value systems. And we learn that uh, we can connect to 
the past, we can connect to the present, and hopefully we're going to use all of this knowledge to create a better future for all of us. So that's my a little bit of my wherewithal for understanding history and wanting to know about history. Um, and a lot of the things that I believe parents should be teaching their children are um, these kind of what I call critical life skills uh, that are related to um, critical thinking and being able to study history allows you to develop those critical thinking skills, which is so important to learning. And a lot of our educational system today, unfortunately, uh, as I've learned through my long educational career, has not been working on developing those critical thinking skills. We don't teach children how to think. Very often we are teaching children what mm -hmm. to think. We're teaching to the test. We're teaching to standards, which are very arbitrary. And just uh, as adults uh, in society are very different, our children, as they are growing up, have different ways of learning. And if we don't encourage them to learn in a way that is going to most benefit them, they're not going to learn very well. So we're trying to fit everybody into the mold and education shouldn't be one size fits all. Uh, it should be tailored to children, which is why partially why my career evolved the way it did, because I began in general education working uh, with students um, in the in the general average population. And then I learned that so many students were being left behind uh, and, and they weren't learning successfully because they weren't learning in the correct way for, for them. And I went into special education and learned all about uh, teaching children with special needs and, and giving them the, the tools that they needed. So I believe parents, of course, are the first and most important teachers. And if we educate parents uh, to teach children the basic skills that they need in a very young age in the home, uh, we can encourage them uh, to learn more successfully. And hopefully, uh, as time goes on, we will, in, the, in our educational system, open up different avenues, different ways to teach children, whether that be homeschooling, a magnet school, a charter school, uh, a Montessori school, a, a children learning with uh, hands-on learning, children learning in uh, vocational types of settings, whatever that might be, uh, we can help our children to become more successful if we tailor our learning to the child instead of taking the child and uh, the educational system and molding that educational system onto the child. Well, I can't agree more with the, the fact that we, as a society, have tried to fit kids into a certain mold or into a certain impact. And that's part of the reason why I have this idea of guiding kids genius, because each of them have their own unique gifts inside of them and a matter of how to find that and how to have each of them explore that in a different way, which a lot of times the school like wants you to be in a certain way to to, to fit into this classroom or into this society or into this and, and how do we, we mix all that? And we'll get dive right into that right after this. Thank you for joining us in today's episode of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. Attention mompreneurs, do you feel like you're constantly juggling the responsibilities without a moment to yourself? It's time to pause and reflect with our Mama Genius quiz. Tailored for busy mamas like you, this quiz will help you identify what's blocking your path and inspire you to harness your unique strengths Transform how you manage life and business, find your rhythm, and ignite your joy. Visit MamaGeniusHub.com today to discover your Mama Genius. And that's MamaGeniusHub.com. And so I really want to dive straight into, so where do parents start 
with trying to navigate this for their kids. I mean, we have tried to put them and, and fit them into this box, but where do we start to really bring that out and, and give that at home, as you were saying, because the parents are the guiding point to start with? Well, there are a lot of things that parents can do. Uh, first of all, you can encourage your child to be an independent thinker. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, letting the child express their opinion on things no matter how small they are and listening to them okay now of course parents are very busy but this is something that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day life you know uh you walk by um a building and you see that the building is an old building and you can say something to the child like oh Look at that old building. I wonder who used to live there. I wonder um, if they dressed the same way as we did. I wonder if they went to school or had a, a classroom like our classroom. I wonder what kind of clothes they had. You know, teaching children that wonder, I wonder, uh, and looking at a billboard, uh, or a picture, a, a poster, Oh, I wonder what that's about. I wonder what message they're trying to give us. What do you think? You know, uh, and even a small child can uh, respond, respond to that, you know, and, and then refraining from judging things. Uh, you know, it, it's difficult for parents, especially we're in that social media mold. Uh, and we're always being fed the algorithm. And as we respond um, to our friends, we, we kind of get this whole buildup of that's the information that we're exposed to. But being open to looking at different viewpoints. And then when your child has a different viewpoint, oh, that's interesting. You know, with not prejudging, just that's interesting. Get, getting them used to the idea of seeing that it's okay to have multiple viewpoints on, on things. And um, giving them responsibilities. Now, no matter how young a child is, you can give them uh, responsibilities. And this is important, you know, in, in building uh, leadership or, or take charge skills, you know. Uh, and if your child does something wrong make sure that they accept responsibility for it you know we have so many of these helicopter parents today who are so interested in protecting their child from everything and it's okay to fail you know uh, it, it it's okay so you made a mistake and you need to try harder and you need to do better the next time. Well, so, I, I agree with you because I think failure is so important, but it's also more so that the key to failure is then the conversation afterwards of what did I learn from it? What can we do? Uh -huh. where, where do we grow from this and move forward rather? But we're, we're human. We're going to make mistakes. It's, it, it's how we respond to it, I think, is so important. Right. And, uh, you know, being fair uh, and allowing them to make those mistakes being fair with them when they when an instant arises when they have to take responsibility for something making sure that you enforce that so for instance if a child gets in trouble at school and the teacher gives a punishment right away some parents will have the tendency to say oh well the teacher was being too harsh with you but Tell the child, well, why do you think the teacher responded this way? And of course, initially the child may think, oh, well, you know, just trying to get back at me, you know, but helping them to see that when we do something, we have to pay consequences for, for it at, at mm -hmm. times. And, and try to be fair with the child as well. Um, and you know, not coming down too harshly and, and not being too permissive either, you know, trying to, to find that middle ground. So 
you can tell the child, okay, you made the mistake, but at the same time, reinforce with the child, I still love you. I still, uh, yes. I, I still am grateful for you. I, I'm still happy to be your parent, you know? So I love that. And I love, I think we need to also differentiate between the action and the child. And I've been really working on that with my son. Cause he keeps saying, well, you don't, you don't like me because of this. I'm like, that has nothing to do with you. I don't like that action, but I love you. Exactly. I think when we separate those two and, and have to keep reiterating that, especially as you hit those teenage years and, and they're like in their heads and, and everything that's going on. That's so key. I, I love that you brought that up because it really is reinforcing how you feel about them, but then separating the action from them. And then I think in linking on to that, being able to negotiate, you know, um, negotiation is an important skill in leadership and children need to know that sometimes the parent should be willing to negotiate with the child. So maybe uh, your child's asking about um, wanting to attend a certain event, maybe going beyond curfew and you say, well, you have to be home uh, before 10 o'clock, but this child uh, is being invited to an event and maybe um, there's going to be a birthday party and it's at night uh, because the parents can only schedule it then. So instead of just saying, no, it's, it's too late, you can maybe make an exception and, and say, well, okay, in this instant, I'm willing to bend and extend curfew because you have a good reason and a good argument for, you know, wanting to do this. So negotiation is such a key skill for them to learn. So sometimes I, I think the parent has to be willing to be talked into something, you know, and we expect the children always to accept our rationale. So, well, you should accept this. I'm the parent and, and this is the rule, but you have to learn that at times it's okay to bend a little bit and the, the child will, uh, you know, understand that there is give and take, there is negotiation. And maybe they'll learn how to do that better with their own relationships with, you know, with children as well. Uh, and I think being organized is super important. Uh, teaching children from a young age, again, linking to responsibility that they need to be organized and responsible for their own things. So whether it's uh, homework, chores, uh, scheduling sports events, you know, and you can teach responsibility at the same time. So the child, you know, if you have a child that wants to do everything, like one of mine was like that, uh, there are only so many hours in the day and, and having the child realize, well, how are you going to organize your time? If you join this, are you going to have enough time to do your homework? Are you going to have enough time to hang out with your friends? Are you going to have enough time to uh, finish your chores? Uh, are you going to have enough free time to watch your favorite television show? Is this all going to fit into your schedule? So with, with simple things, you know, being organized, can, it, can you do all of this? And if you can't, you have to figure out a way uh, to reorganize your priorities and, and just as adults need to have schedules and, and, you know, we need to go to work. We need to have uh, time to do our work at home. We need to have time to spend with our friends that the child can learn to a certain extent to, you know, organize themselves. And then I guess an, another really, really important skill for leadership is communication and uh, being able to listen uh, is, in my opinion is just as important or maybe even in some instances more important than talking 
So I think the totally agree. Parent, parent has to learn to listen to what the child is saying and to value their opinion. So if you teach your child that they have to listen to both sides of the story and not always prejudge. Now, in, instead of just saying, oh, well, that's wrong. Uh, but teaching them to stop and, and listen before they make a judgment. Uh, I can't that, agree with the listening skills that they go both ways. Teaching your kids how to do it, but then you also sitting there listening to them and not interrupting as they're talking or try to fix it for them. But before we run out of time, I want to circle back to the history history aspect, aspect of your um, expertise and genius. And and where do parents, because I, I know that you talk about like be the truth teller and, and, and show them the history and stuff. So where do you suggest that parents start with that? Because there is so much noise with social media and all things of, of where to actually find what you feel would be the truth telling. Well, I, you know, I talk about critical thinking skills and I think in, like I said, in school, a lot of that is ignored today because we're so busy teaching to that test and meeting the standards. So at home, parents can encourage the critical thinking. So critical thinking is finding the truth uh, by examining the facts and then testing them to see whether it is a fact or just an opinion. And parents can easily do that with everyday situations, teaching children the, the difference between fact and opinion. I'm wearing a red shirt, that's a fact, but the color red is my favorite color, that's an opinion. I mean, you can introduce that and when children are watching TV, you can ask them, oh, that person just said something do you think that that's true? Is that, could you prove it? Is that a fact? And encouraging them to watch different types of programs and then notice and evaluate, you know, uh, if you always watch one kind of program or one type of news with one type of viewpoint, your child is never going to get exposed to other viewpoints. So encouraging them to always see the other side of the argument that's that's the way to help them discover facts and and the different mm -hmm. facts and opinions and um show, pointing out on social media uh you can point that out to them well you so much right here no and and showing them that you know that like the, of course they're going to want to fit in with their friends so uh showing them that there is another side is like super important helping them to understand that um not only do you want to find the truth but you want to be able to apply that to other situations so in critical thinking the first step is finding facts and the truth and then the ability to analyze it and see how it's connected to other events that are going on to see how it's communicated how how are people reporting these facts right um and then as child gets older the child will be able to do more and more depth in-depth analysis and being able to compare to other situations so it, it, in critical thinking, you, you find the facts, you look at the context, you get the real, uh, the citations, the primary sources, not those opinions, not the book that somebody wrote about it 20 years later, but the letters, uh, the, the actual quotes of what people said, mm -hmm. maybe historical photographs where you can see what was happening and you make the connections then after you do all of that you can draw some conclusions uh and 
maybe your conclusion is what you expected maybe it's something very different and then there are times when there aren't any conclusions there could be multiple possibilities as to why something happened or why somebody did what they did and again that leads us back to history that's the value in in studying history so what do parents do well they can encourage kids to be curious to always want to know more to go in and to investigate um to find their own solutions we talked a little bit about that before you know um finish tasks find their own solutions to problems um and learning that there's more than one side to the story that leads mm -hmm. them to develop compassion for other people so we have to teach them to be compassionate not only uh toward other viewpoints but to other people who have a belief system different from ours and then understanding that things change because if you look at history uh just if you look at communication for one example how has communication changed in the last hundred years dramatically so oh the gosh. way we communicate of course is is radically changing the way we think and and the way we act so um so we'll be right back right after this before we run out of time do you ever feel like your own dreams are fading on you as you focus and keep everything together for your family or been buried under laundry and school runs and endless to-do lists. They're so deep, you don't even know what they are anymore. The Mama Genius Hub is here to help you uncover that part of you again. Maybe you felt that pull to start a passion project, return to a hobby you once loved, or pursue a career that lights you up, but you're so caught in everyone else's needs that you keep slipping through the cracks. In just 15 minutes a day, our mini courses will help you reconnect with those dreams while finding a new rhythm in motherhood's beautiful, messy life. And best of all, you'll be doing it with community of moms who truly understand the juggle and the joy. The Mama Genius Hub is a community who've been there and are here to support and inspire each other every step of the way. It's time to rediscover your spark, live in your genius, and inspire your kids by showing them how to follow their own passions. Join the Mama Genius Hub today and start creating space for you again without feeling the genius get solo. Come to www.connectingmamas.com for more details. And we're back. So we're just about out of time. So we're going to wrap up with our final question for Barbara. What do you think is one of the misconceptions about motherhood that you think holds many moms back from actually stepping into their genius? That moms need to be perfect. Mm, yeah. There is no perfect mom. There is no playbook for being the most successful, wonderful mom. It's something that you learn and you grow into and your children help you learn along the way. It's not so much you mastering the skill, it's you and your children learning to grow together. I love that. And when you, when that actually answers the part with how we shift that mindset is just that learning of how to grow together and to really put that forward. Tell everyone how they can um, get a hold of you. And I believe you have a free gift to the audience. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd love to uh, offer my uh, 14 reasons for studying history. That's one free gift. But the parents uh, can get all kinds of resources from all of my avenues. So let me just uh, explain a little bit uh, about what I offer. I have a website, first of all, where I have the books that I write to teach children about history. And within those books, I teach critical thinking skills. Um, I have a character who narrates and who asks kids these questions along the way as they read the books. There were 15 books in that series to help develop critical thinking. But I also have uh, a very active Pinterest board and I have collected hundreds of resources for parents, uh, books, curriculum, um, all kinds of resources that they may want to use 
uh, in raising children, developing leadership skills. I have a YouTube channel. So uh, on my YouTube channel, I have videos that were made by kids for kids. I have my own teaching videos. So parents can use supplementary little there. I call it two minute teacher. And they're little lessons that parents can use to supplement uh, children's curriculums. Uh, I have videos on things like facts and opinions and how, how to tell the difference uh, and, and uh, all kinds of things. I have a very active blog. So I review children's books and uh, on that blog, not only do I review children's books, but I also give tips uh, in all kinds of areas. So I might give reading tips, I might give uh, tips for critical thinking, leadership, and, and, and so on. Uh, I have social media, LinkedIn, Facebook page, and, and so on. Uh, so they can reach all of these things at my website. So if they just go to my website, um, littlemisshistory.com, they can find the books, the, the videos, the, the blog, anything. And I am developing a course uh, for parents that I'm going to release in January, an online course on uh, peer pressure, how, how to deal mm -hmm. with peer pressure uh, for children. And I've, a lot of the things that we talked about are incorporated in that course, like developing open communication with kids, how to role play with kids, how to develop their self-esteem, uh, and, um, and so on. So I'm going to have that available in January. Well, she has a wealth of resources for all of you out there, and I'm going to put her backstage for a minute. We're going to go through the five takeaways from to from today. So here we are, we're back. We got a lot of information about critical thinking, about how to do things a little bit differently. So one of the first things is you don't know your history. The, the kids are always trying to figure out what is their history, right? And, and to really prompt them into who am I? How did I get here? But to really start to applying that to things that we see outside, really incorporating that curiosity. And if you see a building or something, asking them about who is behind that and starting that conversation, which then leads us into number two, the differences are something that we're going to start to see, but they aren't necessarily bad. How do we help understand ourselves better is through these differences, through seeing all these things, but starting to understand and it learns to help us connect together more. And all of that creating the past with the, with the present um, then helps us create that better future as she puts it which leads us into number, number three is really starting those critical life skills and really thinking about how to critically think. And some of the things that we were talking about is that not might not necessarily happen in the schools as much because we're trying a lot of times fit them into a mold. So our job as parents is to really start that process, which leads us into number four, which is actually a long takeaway. It's the I wonder, but it's really encouraging them to be independent speakers. And so some of the ways to do that are to express their opinions, to start using I wonder who, who is there. Um, reframing and, and remembering removing that judgment from it when they give us their opinions, use the phrase that's interesting rather than putting your own thoughts on top of it at that moment. And then to also start giving more responsibilities so that and as we allow to do that, we're also having them take responsibility for, for their actions and having those conversations. So they learn how to negotiate. And then she also ended with how to organize their time, and especially with that communication piece of how to really get the first. So that was the number long four, which is on going through some of those aspects of how can you encourage that critical thinking, which then leads us into number five, which is, um, um, now I'm, now I'm, I'm my, I, my thinking has gone all over the place that I, um, <laughs> By writing, encourage girls seeing you finding um, facts and seeing the opinion. So now it's a fact versus opinion. That's where we are. So when we're looking at things, it's really the critical thing is how do we identify the fact versus opinion and really doing that. And I love how Barbara told us to start thinking about and watching different perspectives. So when you stay in one perspective, and it, you can see that in your social media feed, when you start to like something, you start to see more and more of that, and you only see that. That starts to limit our perspectives as well. So you don't want to do that for your kids. You want them to start thinking, see the variety of perspectives so they can start narrowing down for them what is fact, and then they can start basing their opinions based on the facts that they start to learn. And so on that note, I'm going to bring back Barbara to give her final takeaway. Barbara, so you can give us your 
takeaway for today? Well, my takeaway is we are entrusted with an incredible responsibility raising our children. And I think that we should allow them to teach us as much as we spend time teaching them and working together hopefully we will use what we learned in the past what we're learning now and we will be working each as an individual family unit to create a better legacy and a history that is brighter for all of us in the future Oh, thank you so much for joining us today, Barbara. It's been delightful to have you on here and learn so much about critical thinking and what we can do to really inspire our kids to do the same and to really how we can supplement what they're getting in the schools, but let's really focus on you know, making sure that they have those critical thinking skills. So thank you again, Barbara, and we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us in today's episode of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. If you found value in our conversation, Please share this episode with another mama who might benefit. Sharing helps us build a supportive community and reach out to more mamas like you. After all, it's more fun when we do motherhood together. Until next time, stay motivated and continue to pursue your dreams as you shine in your genius.